Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, Dearborn, Michigan, and even more specifically than that, we are in front of Greenfield Village. And over this way, that's the Henry Ford. The Henry Ford Museum, founded by Henry Ford. Of course, Henry Ford, the creator, of the automobile assembly line, kind of the person that made mass-produced automobiles a possibility. And um, the Henry Ford, one of my favorite museums. I, I've come out here multiple times. They have some great artifacts. They have Rosa Parks bus. They have the, the, the car that John F. Kennedy was assassinated in, amongst many, many other things. They also have a great collection of mold aromas. But uh, every time I've come to the Henry Ford, it's been in the winter months. And the Green, Greenfield Village here closed during those months. So I wanted to make a point of uh, coming out and visiting Greenfield Village while it was open. Now, the Henry Ford, of course created by Henry Ford, used his, his own collection of artifacts to found the museum, things that he had saved, things he had purchased. In a very similar way, he created the Greenfield Village by buildings he had collected. Yes, he was a collector of famous buildings. He would, he would find historic buildings across the country and he would have them transported here to Dearborn, Michigan, to Greenfield Village and create his own little paradise of historic buildings. So I'm pretty interested to go in there and see uh, what sort of fantastic buildings in there. It also is, I believe this is the first uh, living museum created in the United States. It was in the 1930s. So uh, please, follow me. Let's head inside the village. This is experience Greenfield Village every season. And they have a giant witch up there. Do they have, do they have witches here? And uh, at Halloween time, I may, may need to already start uh, looking into coming back. Walking here through the Josephine Ford Plaza. It's Josephine Ford, the actual granddaughter of Henry Ford. All right, here we are. This is actually a massive, massive area. So many buildings here. Kind of just taking everything in at the moment. I figured to get a good uh, view of Greenfield Village, we will start with the train. Get pulling into the station there. Let's find us a seat on the train. Park, Pennsylvania. And Sir John Bennett Sweet Shop from London, England, all on Main Street. Behind the Ford Motor Company to the left, the hundreds, the Plimpton House. Where Mr. and Mrs. Plimpton raised seven children in that one room building and south side. They're side having a old timey baseball the game there. Okay, I think we're gonna get off this uh, train station here and uh, explore the village. They're doing Model T rides here. There comes another one. I wanted to take a look at this map, show you guys how massive this uh, this village is. You see all the different buildings there. Each one of those is a historic building, and look, just there's just so much, so many historic buildings. I will do my best today to show you uh, what I can. Oh, there is a pile of horse turds there in the street. That must mean there is some sort of horse ride as well. 
look at this. Here in the center of Greenfield Village, they have a antique carousel. Let's uh, get a closer look here. Oh, there we go. You can ride a cat, that's pretty cool. There's the hippocampus. <laughs> oh, and a, a goat. And look, the zebra. If you look at the zebra, the zebra's not wearing, not wearing a saddle. The zebra, the only animal on the carousel that does not wear a saddle because zebras are wild animals. See the frog hopping by there. Yeah, I do love the variety of animals I have here on this particular carousel. Look at that. You have a stork. It does say Herschel Spillman Company. So this uh, carousel was made in North Tonawanda, New York at the uh, Herschel Carousel Museum and Factory. 110 years old this year. These animals you're looking at are original to this carousel made just for it. All right, let's find us a steed here. I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go for the kitty. I'm gonna ride aboard a mighty cat. Of course, I am a huge fan of cats, so it is a privilege to be able to ride aboard uh, a cat here on a carousel. You know, I have quite a few cats of my own. I don't uh, don't ride them because they're uh, they're way too small. carousels in the past few weeks. I almost feel like this is just becoming a carousel channel. They do give you a fairly lengthy ride on this particular carousel. If they do two full songs, is what the, uh, what the gentleman said. See the steely eye gaze in that cat there. The series about getting, getting me to where I need to go. Okay, this may be the longest carousel ride I've ever been on. And that'll do, cat. That'll do. Oh, I guess I gotta stop here. Gotta obey all, all traffic laws. Hello! <laughs> Up onto that. that was good. So I got a video. Go ahead, keep your hands tight. Oh, look at that. You want to do a different game? Okay. Why don't you put your stilts up against the tree and I'll show you a different game. Is it under the arms like this? Yes, just like that. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Hey, you guys can take him while Fiona's gone too. So that we Now here is a recreation of Thomas Edison's Menlo Park Laboratory. Now I've been to Menlo Park in New Jersey. There's actually no uh, no buildings left over there. So to come out here to Michigan to truly experience Menlo Park. This building here is actually Thomas Edison's lab. Let's see what he's uh see what he's inventing today. Oh, look at that. Couple of light bulbs. This is the photometer room. This is it would use to test the brightness of light bulbs. You know, you can see measuring the light there on a ruler. Got a light bulb down there. Testing a candle over there on the other side. The chemistry nook here with all of Edison's bottles to do his experiments with. Let's go take a peek upstairs. I love the laboratory up there. It's definite, definite mad scientist vibes. All the bottles on the wall there. All the experiments going on. And a giant organ there at the end. And when you learn by your failures, that's how you're eventually going to succeed. That's what Thomas Edison did. The Orville of Overweights, the great inventors. They had failures like everybody else. And the docent here just told us this fascinating story about this chair right here in the center of the room. It was in 1929. They were having the 
celebration of the anniversary of the lighting of the incandescent light bulb. Uh, Henry Ford invited Thomas Edison as well as the president at the time, Herbert Hoover. Uh, Thomas Edison sat in this chair and Henry Ford had it nailed to the ground and said he never wanted anyone to sit in this chair except Thomas Edison, who was his hero. But he made one singular exception when, uh, when Helen Keller came and visited uh, the laboratory here. Thomas Edison, she wanted to touch the chair, she wanted to feel the chair, and Thomas Edison allowed Helen Keller to sit in that chair, and she was the last person to ever sit there. That chair has remained there, nailed to the floor ever since. And you can even see they've, they've redone the floor here in the lab, but the floor there is different. They've left the floor alone where that chair was nailed. That is so much amazing history in one little chair. Doing a quilting demonstration over here, of course, here at the Carpetbagger channel. We are huge fans of quilts and the artistry which goes into making them. There really is so many historical buildings here, it's hard to just uh, take it all in. Each one of these buildings was brought here for historical purposes. Over here we have some uh, slave quarters that were brought up from uh, coastal Georgia from a plantation. This is the Luther Burbank birthplace. And who's Luther Burbank? He invented the russet potato. Hey, probably known as the Idaho potato. So a absolute potato innovator born in this home. In this house here, this belonged to Robert Frost, the famed poet I remember uh, learning about Robert Frost in elementary school. He wrote uh, The Road Not Taken, which is a, which is a poem that uh, I think about from time to time. Hey Frosty, want some snow, man? Yeah, here's one of the poems here, The Road Not Taken. I remember learning this in elementary school where he chose to take the less worn path. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes I do think about that. And this is Noah Webster's home. Noah Webster, literally, literally the man, the man who wrote the dictionary, yeah. The famed author who wrote the actual dictionary. Said uh, here, Noah Webster suggested a single and distinctively American way to spell many words. Said he picked logic instead of logic. So he literally just like decided, decided, no, no, no. This is how we're gonna spell it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the, 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 the final judge and jury here. I get to pick. So yeah, a, a important man. Uh, a very, very, very important man when it comes to linguistics. I guess we can just walk in uh, Webster's house here. Oh. Oh, look at that, there's. There's uh, Noah Webster and his wife. Upstairs here, down the hallway, we have the Webster study. Literally the room in which the dictionary itself was written. See all the reference material he had as he composed the dictionary. The man wrote the dictionary. In this room here, we have a little mini museum. And look at that. That is Webster's Dictionary, of course. But this is Volume 1, published in 1828. The dictionary we still use to this day, originally published. And this is, this is the first edition right there. Some different editions of the dictionary. There's the Merriam-Webster Dictionary from... 1974 and Webster's New World spell, Spelling Checker. This is a computer program from 1985 that would check your spelling. Imagine uh, old Webster had any idea that uh, he would be used to check people's spelling on computerized devices. Yeah, it kind of blows me away. Any one of these houses would be its own museum if it was left 
where it was, but Henry Ford, he was a collector, a collector of historic houses and brought them all here to the Greenfield Village. And it's, I, I almost never seen this much concentrated history in, uh, in one area. Yeah, I did want to come over here to see the old timey baseball game. Oh, just cracked the ball there. Oh, he caught it with his bare hands. That's crazy. Scoreboard there. Very cool old timey uniforms they got here. This guy's gonna this guy's gonna do some batting, I think. Oh, he didn't he didn't chose not to swing at it. He's waiting for waiting for a better a better toss. Oh no, nope, not 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 going not going for that one either. Pitch fairly, sir. No, nope, no, nope, not gonna hit that one either. One ball. Oh, I think that one was too low. I don't know that much about baseball, but uh, you, know, you can put some things together. I know he's got to hit that ball with that bat. Oh, there we go. He cracked it. Where'd it go? Oh, the guy caught it. That's nuts. These guys are like, these guys are, these guys appear to actually be really talented catching those, uh, that baseball there. They don't use, they don't have gloves. They don't have catching gloves. They just catch with their bare hands. Pretty, pretty remarkable. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> As we cheer on those unsuspecting passengers who go in for a board we know not Looking at the scoreboard here, the teams are the Wine Dot Stars and the La Didas. Bus there. It's absolutely crazy when you think about all the money it must have cost, especially back in the day, to move all these buildings here to uh, to Michigan. This is Cotswold Cottage. This is a cottage built in uh, the 1600s in England. So it's not just uh, American homes here at, uh, at, the, at the Greenfield Village. They also uh, ship in homes from other countries. This is a genuine English cottage here. It's the Ferris windmill here. This uh, windmill is from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Moved here to Michigan, believed to be the oldest standing windmill. Of course, it wasn't originally standing here, but it was standing in Cape Cod in the uh, 1600s. This is the Susquehanna Plantation. This was a slave plantation in uh, Virginia during the Civil War. This is a replica of George Washington Carver's cabin. He was a agricultural chemist, often associated with the peanut, and uh, says he was born in slavery and uh, lived in this slave cabin. Says they uh, re rebuilt it based on his recollections and memories. Here they have the horse-drawn omnibus. Horse stopped here to get a little uh, drink of water here at their trough before the next ride. Hey, buddy. Oh, I know. I know. Sometimes I worry. Amos, I'm sorry. It's Amos. If I say hello to that one first, this one won't talk to me. Hey there. 
Hey, buddy. That's all. All right, let's board the horse-drawn omnibus here. by the carousel there. Riding on a real horse next to some wooden horses. very impressive building there's the figures out front it says John Bennett this is a jewelry shop that was moved from England let's check inside the shop here all right looks like it is now a candy shop and this house here belong to the Wright Brothers. This is the home the Wright Brothers grew up in, in uh, Dayton, Ohio. They were the ones that were bringing it to the attention of, you know, Henry Ford. And yeah. A lot of people did that, didn't really get anywhere, but in this case... And next to the Wright's boyhood home is their bicycle shop. This was also moved from Dayton, Ohio, the Wright cycle company see the bicycle there the window they actually worked on bicycles while trying to invent aircrafts oh yeah you can see all the old bicycle tires there hanging up in the rafters see a replica of their famous their famous plane and then a piece of the wing that was given to uh Henry Ford right there. See back in here where the actual plane making took took place. See the frame coming together there. And across from the Wright brothers we have the Heinz house. This belonged to H.J. Heinz. It says this is the house where he first developed his products leading to the ketchup empire it says uh yeah the basement of this house he was bottling uh bottling horseradish which apparently was his original project uh not ketchup into the ketchup house here oh okay there's a little ketchup museum here inside see all the different condiment bottles here and I made a lot of stuff besides ketchup. Preserved sweet pickles, celery sauce. What is celery sauce? That, <laughs> that doesn't sound great. <laughs> well, we have currant jelly. Currants are currently banned in, uh, in the United States. Display jar there with all the different vegetables crammed in it. There's a scale there shaped like a pickle. A little aside here on uh, Campbell Soup, the Campbell Soup Kids in doll form. Love this here. A little uh, pickle sizer there for traveling pickle salesmen. Go to meetings and show people uh, how uh, how big the various sizes of pickles were. You keep this little leather case here with the artificial pickles in it. And here's a replica of Henry Ford's own Ford. Motor Company. See all the 
car pieces there. You can see the assembly line where people put in cars together. But in this building, they have the 15th millionth Ford ever made here, this Model T. This mural here says, watch the Fords go by. And we've been watching the Fords go by, the Model T's going by all day. And now it is time to hop on a Model T of our own as we board the Model T's here in this building. Yeah, it seems like this is the big ticket ride here. All these people in line, the opportunity to ride a Model T. Alright, and my chariot awaits. So we're riding in a 1914 Model T. 1914. This one happens to be the oldest vehicle in our fleet that we get to drive. Oh, okay. Built on Henry Ford's first ever moving assembly line in 1914. That way he would make sure that all of those cars got sold and they weren't sitting around on a lot doing him no good. So the price went from $850 all the way down to 550 Robert Frost's house. Right there. Yep. Next door is this Noah Webster's Noah house. house. Yeah. Dictionary dude. And we have a lot of weddings to go on here. Oh, I'm sure. Makes sense. So the way it works is very different. You've got your accelerator here. Oh, yeah. You've got your brake pedal over here where your normal gas pedal would be. Pedal in the middle today at the uh, Greenfield Village here, the collection of historic buildings created by Henry Ford. And it's, it's kind of mind boggling that this place even exists when you look at the different homes, the different historic buildings that he was able to acquire and ship from all over the country. I don't know. I don't know how you move a house. Like, I don't know how you ship a house from uh, from New England to Michigan, from the South to, to, to Michigan. I don't know if you take it apart. I don't know if you take every nail and every board out and then pack them up or if you like just throw the house on the back of a train. Whatever it is, it's pretty remarkable that this was all preserved. I'm glad it was preserved. Like I said, I, I do wonder, like, it's interesting. You, you wonder if, like, the places where these came from, if they wish that maybe he would have left them there so that uh, they could enjoy them. And, of course, being created by Henry Ford, you associate Henry Ford with cars and transportation. You've got the, the train, the omnibus, the horse-drawn omnibus, the Model T. It's really cool being able to drive an authentic Model T, a 1914 Model T. You got to ride in a vehicle that was built before anyone alive was born. And as I mentioned, this place is just so big. Like, I don't know, I, I obviously didn't cover everything, so I may have to make, make a return visit in the future to uh, to show more of uh, Greenfield Village here. And it does look like they have a pretty uh, fun Halloween event. I'm gonna look into that. That might be worth uh, checking out at some point. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to contribute to the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month 
from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop for different cryptid carpetbagger face pins right now. You can buy all four for a discounted price or just pick out one that you really like. If uh, you'd like to get a personalized message from me, I am doing cameos now. Personalized messages, birthdays, anniversaries, just for fun. Anything you'd like in the description of this video is where you'll find all that information and all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible high in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.